Looking at your figures and them Instagram pictures Got me thinking what I wanna do to you, you, you Late night conversation got me really contemplating All about this head between me and you You talk a good talk, girl You ain't about that life What you want, girl? Tell me all about that I can't even front, girl The way you swag it on them The way you bag up on it I can never pass on it You got that you got that, you got that thing I like, I like, I like You got that damn girl I think you got that shit I wanna feel Meet me halfway, show me that it's real, real, real She say, she say, you got that thing I like, I like So I know this what we both want So I be on my way I know you sound insane But you can have my babies You can be my lady My name, my name, my name Now you pulling all of my chains, my chains uh-huh. I say I know you glad I came You glad I came No need to explain, ain't no games You know you got that, you got that, you got that thing I like, I like, I like You got that damn girl, damn girl I think you got that shit I wanna feel Me, me halfway, show me that it's real She said, she said, you got that thing and you are now tuned into another episode of Intellectually Petty Radio brought to you by M3S3 Clothing. Men make moves and suckers stand still. And as always on the mighty, 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 mighty Nerd DJs Radio Network, today we're doing something a little different because we got somebody a whole lot of different. We got one of the greatest singers in the history of niggas, of people, of generations, of vocal cords, of tongues, ears, and whatever the fuck. This nigga is one of the dopest niggas to ever come out of Detroit. Shout out to you, man. Um, we got Dre Sconey in the motherfucking building. How you doing, bro? What up, though, man? That was a good <laughs> intro. <laughs> what up, though? Thank you, bro. What up, yo? I, 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 like I was telling you, man, you look rich. You, you look like you oh, feel I'm good. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. You know what I'm saying? I do feel good, like James. You know what I'm saying? I'm not mad at that. Yo, I was talking to Rita earlier today. I said, nigga look like he just wakes up and smacks holes. <laughs> and starts and starts singing not about it. Face. <laughs> not on the face, maybe the booty, you know what I'm saying? I'm not mad at that right there, man. Yo, 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 when did you know this is what I want to do? Man, um, to be real with you, man, I grew up in a, a church family full of music, singers, musicians, everything. So I felt like it was kind of natural for me. I just kind of six years old started playing drums and singing and just doing everything um and i just loved it instantly i think you know my inspiration seeing my family and seeing their faces seeing how much they love you and made me want to do it so you like a mix of i want to like like sugar free goldie um the temptations and 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 a, and a church choir yeah, how, exactly. how the fuck <laughs> I mean, it's. I mean, that's what Detroit is, though, ain't it? It's, it's like, it's it's like it's like it's like three. Uh, I call it the three C's: it's the church, club, and the corner. You know what I'm saying? It's like you, you pretty much grow up in one of those situations, and if you ain't grow up in that situation, you're familiar with that situation. So, doing the interview. And, and, and you know, uh, my, my my brother is uh, actually uh, doing a show tonight with uh, Raheem Devine, correct? Yes, sir. And shout out to Raheem Devine. So we up at a uh, soundboard at uh, Motor City. I'm okay. in the dressing room right now. <laughs> so that's for you know that that that's, thank you, man, for taking the time out to do the show. No uh, the first song, talk, walk me through that song. Like, how was that creating that? What was the uh, the inspiration for that one? 
which song? Uh, my lady. Yeah. Uh, my lady was more so like I was kind of like in my younger Jodeci phase. Um, I would say I was um, trying to mix it with hip hop a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I was trying to find that medium that I felt comfortable with, you know, as far as mixing like, you know, what I thought I should be doing in R&B with um, what I liked as well. So I was trying to find that, you know, I listened to a lot of Future and stuff like that type of music at the time. Mm-hmm. But, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to make it R&B. I felt like, you know, it was an element of that that was missing with, you know, that in the R&B realm. So I was trying, you know, to be real with you, like, I enjoyed making that song. But uh, it's definitely not something I see myself, like, making again. You know what I'm saying? But it's like one it's part of my story. And I love the song. You know, I would have, you know, first I had a little lady that I was trying to get at, obviously. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. Did, did it work? It, oh, it definitely worked. It definitely <laughs> worked. You know, it don't matter no more because it was a long time ago. But, you know, yeah, I feel like it's one of those songs, though, like, you can kind of, like, ask a girl to be a girl in a in a cool kind of way. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to necessarily be all lovey-dovey. Yeah, and that's what that's 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 one thing I got from your music. Uh, it, it's it puts you in a space, and it make you feel you know it, like I'm driving on the freeway going to work, and I feel better. You know, I got I got a little bit more uh, umph about myself. It's like when you put on the right clothes and you got the right mm-hmm. cologne and you go into the right spot and you feel yeah, like you crazy. right right in your pocket. You know, that's dope. You know, it's crazy. Like I always. Cause that's how I listen to music, right? Like all my favorites, I listen to them on my way to work, like you know, in, in, in the whip or whatever. So I always imagine people listening to my music on their way to work. That's crazy. That's what you said. Yo, and you got Nick Speed with you too, right? Yeah, he should be popping in here in a minute. Yo, Nick Speed is one of them ones, mm-hmm. bro. Yeah, he helped me do my last album, uh, my album mm-hmm. Rolling Stone, oh, uh, and he actually was able to even like introduce me to um, Barry Strong. Barry Stone, who wrote the original song, the Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone. Really? Um, he was one of the writers, yeah. So he just passed away last year. But before he passed away, I was able to get on the phone with him. He gave me the thumbs up on the song and stuff like that. Me and his son are pretty cool, too, now. So, you know, it's, it's going pretty good. How long, how long you been on this journey professionally? I've been on this journey for a long time. Uh, you were, like, standing outside the door. My bad. <laughs> Basically, just uh, I've been doing this professionally since I would say 2006. It's been picking up for me. Uh, I would say even more so 2007. Honestly, it's been a long journey though. But my whole life has been music. Where is R and B at right now? I feel like R and B is uh, is is getting back to like being like more underground at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm and I'm appreciative of the hustle, the bustle, because you know what it does. You know, um, it kind of filters out the BS deal. At first, you know what I'm saying? You kind of wish you didn't have so much hoopla going on so you can get seen easier. But if now that it takes so hard, so much work to get seen now, it kind of like you got to fight through the hoopla. So it mm-hmm. kind of evens itself out. But um, I think uh, just naturally me wanting it so bad, I just, I just always just kept going and just you know, trying to figure out the next thing for myself, how to make myself different, stand out from everybody else. And um, that's really been my goal, to keep standing out, keep doing what I love. When did you decide to go with the the, uh, the retro look? Um, for me, it was always in my sound. It was always kind of in my look. So it was like more so me taking it back. Take it, sitting back and doing an audit on my career, right? I'm like looking at like what's going on, like what am I doing right now? Like, all right, what's this? What's the consistency? What do I love? What do I want to do? What do I want to represent? You know what I'm saying? What makes sense for me? You know what I'm saying? I start breaking it down like that. The whole church bringing upbringing, me being a preacher's kid, you know, learning my way through the church and stuff like that, and just having more connection to live music, soul music, and even like if you listen to the song I did with Obi Trice, spend the day. Like honestly, if you put that with like an old school band, it would still sound like some Motown stuff. And so it's like I started picking up on this wave that I was doing. I even had the waves. I brought, I did the finger waves back in probably like 2015. 
and <laughs> I was rocking jeans and, and sneakers, though. You know what I'm saying? But it was I was just I just kept doing stuff, and I was leaning more toward this direction. Now I guess I, you know, because I got the hood side of me, because I'm still from Joy Road, you know, Plymouth area, and uh, so it's like. You know, still being like from the hood, you still want to wear your sneakers, you still want to wear your jeans. So I kind of had to grow up a little bit, man. I had to mature out of that. I feel and, you. you know, I started thinking of like, you know, what I saw when I grew up watching the old school dudes. And I went to the gas station to go get like some potato chips or something. I see an old school dude, you know what I'm saying, pulling up with the Cadillac, you know what I'm saying, hopping off the whip, you know, fly. <laughs> we see it our whole life. It's like a Detroit thing. I even man. I even got an uncle that used to have the platform shoes with the fish at the bottom. So it's like, you know, <laughs> and then and it's like you don't see this stuff no more. And it's Detroit, right? It's a representation of Detroit. You don't see it like that no more. I still sometimes you go to the casino, you might see some an old school dude with the waves. But like, you know, I'm like you know what? This this is what I want to do. This is really where I want to go. I had Motown's had it on me for the longest too. So it's like it was just more so just like finally choosing to go all the way there and having the confidence to do it because a lot of people told me man like i shouldn't be doing like old school music because it's gonna date me it's gonna make me older and stuff like that and i'm like man this, this is what i want to do not until silk sonic came out mm -hmm. is when i started really getting love you know from my peers and what i was doing i was still getting love but from the people around me like the detroit scene i don't think they was really totally understanding it until like silk sonic dropped and you know people were like okay i see what you want now you know I don't. I think the opposite, though. I don't think it dates you. I think it it removes the date. That's real. Cause we still listening to six. Like I still listen to Papa was a Rolling Stone. Like they just made oh, the yeah. shit. Man, and, and it still feel like that when you every time I exactly. turned, I was listening. I was listening to Marvin Gaye. I want you today. I played that song probably thirty times this morning. Nigga, and it feel the same every time I play it. You so, see what I'm saying? So I, I seen like, a video of that nigga. I'm sorry, I seen a video of that nigga practicing, laying down on the couch, nigga. Yes, and it sounded yeah. like fucking velvet. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. oh my god. Yeah, bro. I'm glad you didn't yeah. listen to people. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't either. Like now, hindsight looking looking where I am now, back then, like, man, I'm so glad I stuck to my guns. I say that a lot. It took a lot for me to have this confidence in myself. People really tried to clown me. I even had somebody trying to clown me in a in the storyline last night because they saw my hair they might they got the camera out they were like who is this i turned around they didn't know I, they didn't know i peep so i turned around like yeah i'm a i'm a singer my name is Drake scone you should follow me i gave her a car like bam you know what i'm saying it's still like the transition for people you know what i'm saying they ain't a lot of people you know my generation and yet or younger ain't necessarily seen this you know what i'm saying yeah. so yeah. i'm connecting the dots for real you know i even had a um a young lady wanted to meet me just because she felt like she never seen a dude like that before. She was like, I just gotta meet you. You know, I, you know, I seen the five heart beats, you know, so I want to take your hair. <laughs> so it, it's kind of cool, man, you know, to be the representative of soul right now. That makes sense. Nigga, that makes complete sense. Um, and I didn't, you know, my dumb ass, I didn't put the names of the songs at the bottom of them. So, you know, uh, we just gonna randomly drop into them so i got another one let me get this one out of here so i won't play that again uh yo, uh, mm, yo and I, I see you got fame's whip too on uh 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 what is that sconey the sconey uh which which album was that the sconey one uh what you mean you got uh what car is that the brown car on the on the album cover fame from uh 313. oh that's the rolling stone yeah that's rolling stone yeah, yeah, I got a yeah. yeah. I got, it's a few songs on that one that I I, I bump oh, yeah. On, on, yeah consistently yeah. like those those. Yeah, that's the one that Nick Speed did with. Me. I produced a few on there too, but yeah, that's the one Nick Speed did. With me. I got Kenny Flag on one of the records, so yeah, I got some I got some heavy hitters on there. How is that working with Nick Speed? Like, do you go in? Do you have an idea of what you want to do, or you just kind of like go in and let that nigga do what he do? Man, Nick Speed can do what he want to do. Like, if you let Nick Speed. Take the will, he will take the will. You know what I'm saying? But the good thing about him, he's an open. He's open too. He wants to know how mm -hmm. that you want. Uh, the way me and him, you know, the environment that we was in when we started creating, though, we was more like in a, on the live scene, DJ scene, listening to music and stuff. And I was just like paying attention to how they weren't playing, like like where the Motown at. You know what I'm saying? We like, you know, we like it. You know, got all this, you know. Uh, 
EDM going on and stuff like that. And, and it's dope. And then you got people like Aaron Filler. You know, rest in peace to Aaron Filler, my boy. Um, you know, you got people like him that, you know, did so much. And, like, we're the new ones that, like, Pat, you know what I'm saying? So it's just more so, like, me and him got together and realized what we were missing. And it was like, let's let's do this. And I told him what I want to do. I always had the idea. I, I got these puns in my name. I got the Rolling Stone. I got Quincy Stone. I got Scony Island. You know, I got a few names. So, like, uh, I was like, I always wanted to do something with Rolling Stone. And because we heard the song playing that night. And he was like, all right, bet. So we, we linked up probably like a few days later. He whipped that beat up in like 15 minutes, dog. And, uh, the words just because our because it was in the back of my head, it was so easy to write the song. We probably wrote the song in another fifteen minutes, and, and the song was pretty much done in like an hour for real. Yo, that's so, crazy. Yeah, it was a, it was a fun song. We didn't make it too complicated. We just wanted to, and I wanted to change the the, the narrative of the song because mm-hmm. you know Rolling, Rolling Stone is kind of like a sad song in its, in its actuality. Yeah. So I just wanted to turn it into a few positive song. So we made it more like a part, you know. Party All right, well, I ain't sure which one of these it is. All I know is I got four or five fire ass songs. So we're gonna get into another uh Dre Sconey. And, and and the first thing I thought about was Sconey Down. Like like I'm hey. from the I'm from the Pony Down YBI era, so oh, that, for real? yeah, that's the first thing. See, y'all I thought got, about. Y'all got, see, that's the stuff that I don't get too like you know, everybody be giving me stories and stuff like that, but I don't really get too much insight on because I was a church boy, so you know, I got my insight, but I ain't got all of it. So I'll be wanting to hear people's stories, man. You know what I'm saying? Yo, man, we're we'll talking about it. Let's get into a song. We'll come right. And you know, to, to, so, for the record, I've never done this on, on the show before. Real? Yeah. I mean, we've had like when I used to do it on Blog Talk, we would have like listening sessions, but I ain't never did it since we since I started doing video. Well, I appreciate you, man. I am honored. I feel blessed to be a part of this right now. God bless you, brother. You deserve it, bro. All right, let's let's go. Let's see what we got here. You are now tuned into Intellectually Petty Radio. Yeah, hosted by your man's job. Yeah, 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 we got Trey Sconey in the building. Let's go. Detroit, what up though? Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like Mason in the morning. Y'all already know. Oh baby, I can see you getting close to me. Find your comfort in me. Oh baby, oh baby, I pour my love on you.
radio host on 107.9 or 98, you know, wake up early in the morning. This is Mason, right after uh, 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 he plays Hello Detroit. We got Drake Sconey in the building, you know, what for your listening pleasure. It's, we're going to pretend it's 10 o'clock at night. Ladies, where you at? Call in at 555-5555. <laughs> Yo, that's a fire ass song, bro. Like, I just absolutely you, love that shit. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's what my Kenny Slave uh, produced. I had uh, my uh, dog come from the Clouds band, my band on the saxophone. I had my boy Pay Jones playing guitar from Texas. Yeah. Rita, in, stop right texting me. <laughs> she, she's like, oh my God, he's my favorite. Tell him, yo, yo, I'm trying to do an interview here, Rita. He's my Damn. Favorite too. <laughs> <laughs> His sweetheart, though, man. Like, it, you know, I, you know, as much as hate that be out there, I can't never hate on no love. You know, I always receive the love. So. Yo, um, who's the dream feature? Sheesh. Uh, right now, I would have to say probably like Andre 3000. Uh, that's not, the hip-hop. not flute Andre 3000, but no, rapper. not flute Andre 3000. Okay, yeah, all right, I got you. Uh, outside of that, like the uh, singers or uh, producers, I would say, man, I would love, and I don't think it's going to be hard to do it, but I would love to just get Quincy Jones in the studio one time just to check out my music. I don't need them to do nothing. I just love for them to say, yeah, I like your stuff or not, or do this. You know what I'm saying? Critique you. Um, as far as working with uh, producers right now that I would love to work with right now, I feel like um got to be in this lane, man that I'm, I'm kind of headed toward like people like D miles people like I'm working with piranha head. He out of Detroit. Um, people like that, man, um, that knows the live music. Me and the clouds working on the actual live song, um, album as well. Recording all live music, like the Motown days. And, um, I don't know, man, that's kind of the, the rim I'm going. Somebody that can take me there. Like somebody that could be on some Ohio players type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, oh. You know, I need some, some gambling huff shit. Gambling huff. That's what I need, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to take it there again. Like, you know, I can do, I produce, I produce the uh, better days. I produce a few records on my album. So, like, I really do produce. I don't really need producers. You know, it's always good to work with producers, mm-hmm. but I need musicians. I need people that, I need people like Quincy Jones that can bring a band together and make a song. You know what I'm saying? You. So, yeah, that's the realm I'm in right now, you know? Yo, I want to do it while I can, you know. Uh, you and Snoop, though, man, just seem like y'all, 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 y'all just need a song together, just because y'all just yeah, both got that just work. cool ass vibe going. Yeah. I can see the video, y'all already Smoke in the old stuff. school, <laughs> yeah, you know, in the old school classic, blowing one, yeah, talking yeah, about some 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 chick y'all knew from back in the day. Like you could see that. I wouldn't mind Snoop being like a mentor to me for real, because he he didn't seen a lot. You know what I'm saying, like. He one of the people that like really got some knowledge and really had to figure out how to maneuver around this industry and still stay true to himself and crossed over. You know what I'm saying? So that's somebody I would love to sit down with too. Snoop, if you hear this one day, you know what I'm saying? Hit me up. You actually, uh, because I was talking to my guy Glasses before we did the show. And and he out there on the West Coast and he like, kind of like a big deal. Um, I told him to tap in because I told him he was dope. So you never know. Yeah. Yo, yo what's the biggest, the, the most surprising call you've gotten? Um, most surprising call. Man, I don't really get surprised no more. Uh, I'm just thankful. I'm blessed. I feel blessed. Uh, I think the, I don't know. Last year was kind of crazy for me. I won two contests last year. I won the Motown Israel Amplified Artist of the Year. Me and the Clouds won a cover contest for Sylvia Moy, the Masterpiece. We won 25000 on that. And I was 25000 Yeah. Ooh, that's yeah. got some good so, weed in it right there. You feel me? <laughs> so, like, uh, I think we can do a little bit with that. I'm not but, bad like, at that. But, you know, like, you know, the, my Motown relationships right now has been amazing. Like, they've been introducing me to people like uh, Otis, been able to sit down with Otis, been able to sit down with certain people. Um, I've been getting phone calls from, like, the spinners and the four, people from the Four Tops. 
making friends with people like that. So, you know, like you never really know what's gonna happen in the future. You know, I got a um, also did a scissor reel last year. Uh, I played Jackie Wilson in scissor reel. So, you know, yo, that's who's, crazy. Who's, yeah, who's to see what say what's gonna happen with that as well? So, you know, I put some seeds out there in the ground. We'll see how they grow. Yo, yeah. that is crazy. Damn, I was, I, I, you didn't fucked around. I didn't fucked around and forgot what I was about to ask. It was something in my mind that was like super deep and shit. And I didn't feel, oh, your grandma Ruby. Yes, yes, yes. That's my heart right there. Describe the role she's played. Cause I, like, if you haven't heard, before you go in, if you haven't heard, um, there's an excerpt on the album where she telling him, stop giving your shit away, nigga. Make these niggas pay and, and they'll respect you more. And man, yo, yeah. like that resonated with me because I do a lot of free shit. Yeah. I and mean, you get tired when of it come, it. yeah, when it comes to like um, the heart of good people, like good people got good hearts, right? You know what I'm saying? We want to we wanna collab. We want to do the work. We want to do what it takes to, you know what I'm saying, work with people. But I feel like a lot of people, when they see people that's so willing to give, they're so willing to take. You know what I'm saying? Man. And, you know, it, it, it'll, it'll burn you out. But I think the biggest thing sometimes is to just stay true. That's one thing I learned from Otis. From the Temptations, that's one of the things he said. No matter what, he never really, he never became a superstar. Even though people treated him like that, he never really became a superstar. He just stayed thankful. And it's treated like that because then your expectation, your expectation of yourself goes down. You know what I'm saying? Stop the sign, the, the autograph. Stop and take the picture always you know those things matter so it regardless of what people do to me and irritate me you know I, I definitely keep my space from bad energy but i'm just gonna do what i love at the end of the day um but at the same time you know you gotta live and you gotta gain respect to, at the same time you're not doing this you no know, more for necessarily notoriety if that makes sense like yeah um I think when people do it for that reason, it's, it's really for the wrong reason. If people are trying to make music to get famous. It's kind of the wrong reason. Like if you look at it as a business and you're looking at the numbers and understanding what fame can do for your numbers, then that's different. But if you are here just for the women and the money and the, you know the lifestyle, I think you know, you know, whatever with that. But for me, my intentions are pure to be great. You know and I want to leave a legacy behind. I actually want to do it the right way. I don't mm -hmm. really want to be known as like, you know what I'm saying? The um, Yeah, I could be a ladies man. I could be suave, but I ain't going to be mannish. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I don't want to be that <laughs> guy either. You know what right. I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You, like, I'm going to be a gentleman at the end of the day, but, you know, you can't play me either. You know what I'm saying? But it's just, when it comes to what my grandma was saying, that was like, set a standard. You know? This ain't, you ain't doing nothing for charity no more. You didn't, your work is your work. Yeah. You know your value and get what you deserve. And like sometimes people look at people that do music or people that do what you do, like a podcast or radio, like we got a hobby or something. Like this ain't a lifestyle for us. You know what I'm saying? Like this ain't a choice. Like we just need, um, we just need a break or we just need whatever somebody throw at us. Man. No. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't like that. Like, yeah, you know, like ultimately, you know, yeah, I want to do it ultimately. But if you make me feel like, you know, I'm not getting up, it's nothing gonna be you no know, worth in it for me, or no value in it for me, then no, I don't have to do it. Like it has to be valuable at some point. And whether that value, you know, my irritation is people pay for whatever they they really want. And I'm gonna call it like it is. I'm always gonna do this, Jay. So I'm gonna say it like this: people spend money. I'm gonna say niggas spend money on women all the time, right? Yep. Dropping bags on them, taking them on trips, you know what I'm saying? But don't want to pay me for a show, don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Don't want to pay me for a feature, don't want to pay me for a beat. They go drop bags on weed and all that, and everything else. Just go drop bags on Cardi. You want to go look, be seen. Matter of fact, I'm a Cardi. You want to be seen <laughs> and artist, so you want to, you know what I'm saying, drop bags on everything else. But the stuff that really counts, you trying to, you trying to work out deals in the background, so. You know, I don't mess with that. If you are here and you making a living for yourself, spread that. Create the economy. Yeah. Economy. Like, yeah. I don't expect nothing for free, ever. 
you know, I take, if I get a dollar, I feel blessed and I make sure I thank people because they don't have to do it. And you always got to offer something back. Don't just take. That's can, it right you there. Know you know what I'm saying? If I can just, if I can do something for that person, even for y'all, you know what I'm saying? For opening y'all doors for me, if I could do something in return, I would love to, you know what I'm saying? So it's always about that. It's always about building and, uh, you know, extending your arms, you know, you know, making family out here. So. Yeah, I'm 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 fir I'm a yeah, firm believer of, of that. It's like yeah. over the years, I've I've must be nice because I am <laughs> I don't get paid the next week. <laughs> you ain't had to do that, bro. That was unnecessary. <laughs> you know, but I'm one of those people. Like, if if you do something for me. I'm going to always reach out to you. Like it ain't going to be every day or every week. I'm not going to bug you, but I'm going to reach out. Hey, is there anything you need? Can I do something for you? Cause I don't want to ever feel like I'm taking advantage of somebody. No, man. You know, the streaming, anytime I play my music, that's going to help me. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all know how it works. Y'all hear all the story, you know, I always don't get paid like that on, on music no more. So the streams is how we get our money in a way. It's not how we get all our money, but it's a, it's a revenue stream. So, you know, the more y'all stream us up, the more it helps for real, especially the indie artists. And I ain't trying to hate on, like, I don't never hate on, like, the, the legends, but, you know, they in the system already. They kind of getting their fans. They ain't never not going to get their fans. But when it comes to, like, the new indie artists, it's a little harder for us to get people to click that link. Yeah. So I just want to put that energy out there, let y'all know. If y'all can look out for an indie artist, if y'all know somebody that's working their behind off on making music, you know what I'm saying? Shoot, play their playlist the whole night while you go to sleep. You know what I'm saying? Do something for them. Help them out. So. Yo, I don't know if y'all hear my dog in the background, but this nigga is about to lose his house. He is up there <laughs> acting a fool. You about to be homeless, bro. I'm telling you. Like, this nigga is up there acting a fool for no reason. Uh, <laughs> yo, uh, let me uh, let me see. What else we got? We got we got a couple more songs. We got like a half an hour to go. You good on time? Yeah, the sound check's taking a little longer. So we good right now. All right, all right. We're going to get into another song real quick. Uh, again, I, I don't know which one it is. I just know it's different. Yeah, that last one was called Love On Me. That's one of my... I'm doing that tonight, too. It's one of those V-Day specials. Yo, I, I actually, I sent that one to... My cousin and his wife, they've been together for, for fucking my whole life. Um, but they can ballroom like like nobody's bit. Like, they are phenomenal. Um, and and I, when I heard that song, I instantly vis I saw them ballroom into this song. That's awesome. So I sent it to this nigga at eight o'clock in the morning, and hopefully, Lord willing, I woke this nigga up. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, I need I need you and and, and Kawana to ballroom to this and send it to me. No, I appreciate your energy, man. God bless you, brother. Yo, you, you, that's what you need on that song, bro. Is a ballroom yeah. challenge. Yeah. Just my two cents. Yeah, I like that. You that's know. fire. Ballroom challenge. We need to, yes. get, that, we need to get that popping. Yes. Ballroom challenge. Okay. Yes. I'm, you I'm know, gonna write that down. It's a it's a, it's a song for 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 the old heads, the new heads, the whatever. But yeah. I think seeing two people in love ballroom dancing to it would give it such a different life. True. Yeah, I agree. All right. Anyway, uh, let me get off my soapbox and we'll play another song. Let's see what we got. Uh, and I think this one's, uh, this is off of 8 Mile to ATL. Yeah. Let's Which see what we got. Okay. Oh, yeah. This is, this is oh, Lose Yourself. Yeah, this is crap right here, bro. Lose Yourself. Oh. Uh, Lose Yourself. Lose Yourself. Holding on to this, I can't put my life now. On my brain 24 hours a day yeah. It's only your heart and your love that I'm after But it seems like that's too much to ask of you Why don't you lose yourself in me? And let me lose myself in you So we never took all we have about you can't deny. 
lovers all find a whole destination We could make it if we try Right now it's stormy weather But I'm not going nowhere What we have will last forever Yourself in me. And let me lose myself in you. Why don't you lose yourself in me? Now brighter days like And just reach out for me Yo, that's a beautiful fucking song, bro. Thank you, bro. Yo, yeah. and like when I when I I was listening to Man. that song, that's the song where I was like, and I was telling Rita, I'm like, we gotta do this doing different. We gotta play some music. And I and what I really what I really wanted was you and a guitar. Mm. For that song. Gotcha. You know, um okay. things happen. It's been dope either way, man. Uh, yo. Next week. Come here. Yeah, come on, Nick. What, up, what, what you doing, bro? Say what up to the crowd. What, yo. what up, though, bro? Yo. 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 He, can't, he can't hear you that well because you're in the air. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Peace, peace, peace. What up? <laughs> what, what's going on? He already know, right man. Yeah. It, exactly. Yeah. Right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, tell them about you know what I, I got to get one of those uh, uh 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 those turntables too. Okay. Oh yeah, the CDJs. Yeah. You want the real turn? The real. Boys. Oh, this nigga got this nigga then got extra fly. This nigga got the nineteen sixty super coat on. Woo! You me too. We, we nigga. Trying to pimp man. Hold on, I got this microphone too. Look, you see this microphone? Oh, are you? Yeah. Yo, y'all don't know, man. That microphone is not cheap. No, it's not. It's like too big. Yeah, I'm, I'm just putting it out there, like, like that's yeah. That's, 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 that's definitely gives like you that vibe out, too. Yo, and if you just yeah, tuned in, um, we got nice Dre Sconey in the building. Good show, man. All good. Have a good. And right now he is in his dressing room. Uh, he's got a show he's about to do with uh, Raheem Devine, so you know he got to do what he got to do, man. You know he got to he got to kiss the babies and meet the people. Um, and if you have been tuning in, we've played a few of his songs already. I think I got time for maybe one or two more. I might just go ahead and slide one in. Pause. Uh, while he out there doing his thing, I already know what you do. So. For the show? Yes, I will I be here the whole time. I understand. You know how how shit goes. Having had the honor of being backstage once or twice, uh, although you know I'm not performing shit, 
Appreciate y'all. Niggas, niggas be busy. You know, no, I'm sorry. You know, I was just I don't know if you realize I was just talking to Raheem Devon. So you know, he was just introducing himself to me. So it just worked out. Hey Kurt, can I give you this? Oh, that's pretty dope. I don't know if he was talking yeah. to us or not, but I'm gonna yeah, I'm I was. Just gonna, I'm, I'm, just, back. I'm just gonna say I'm he was talking to us. <laughs> I was talking to you. Know, I, mean, I just I just got to you, uh Raheem Devon real quick, so I ain't wanna uh sorry to do that to y'all, but I had to put my mic out there. So oh, sorry no, bro. about that. Like, we, we're not tripping, man. You you, you at work, nigga. Like I'm, I'm yeah. I, I'm not mad at that, you know. Uh, I've had people sell me out before, so. <laughs> Yo, no, here, yeah, you yeah. Know, uh, you, want, um, you want a fifty foot cable, or do you want a? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let him do that, and we're gonna we're gonna jump into another song real quick, just because I, I want to hear some shit, and he got time. Let them do that stuff for free, nobody. You need to do the same. Quit giving them stuff. And you know what? I'm sorry. I'm gonna bring that one back. Cause that's that's the grandma uh, Ruby interlude, and I just want them to hear that one. So we're going to a song. Ooh, I've been, I've been in the morning time. I got a shooter on the side of me Get your boys when I'm called the same no, I'm talking about. It's gonna be what it have to be Don't play if you know what I mean no, I'm about. I wouldn't want a problem with me Let alone they be trying to compete no, I'm talking about. Smoking on trees and canopy With a pretty girl that had a big love at night Trying to compete no, I'm Smoking on trees and canopy With a pretty girl that had a big love at night www.sucktheseballs.com I don't know. <laughs> Shout out to Snow, yeah, I, actually, I actually produced that one. That's the one I produced. Yo, that's crazy right there, yeah. bro. Oh, my God. Yo, I had me in here bossing up and everything. Like, come on, bro. Oh, I'm man. Away. Yo, like, what, what's your process for producing? Um, I ain't got no real process. Uh, I just kind of go for it. Sometimes I study first. Sometimes I might grab my inspiration. But I'm, I feel like I'm pretty standard when it comes to creation. Just with a little bit more of a 
I'm not standard with my ability, but probably mm-hmm. it's my standard process. Like um, one thing I thought was interesting, like, you know, I do a lot of my melodies instead of writing lyrics, I, I do melody lines. For instance, that last song, Better Days, I uh, once I made the beat, I just did a melody through the whole song. Didn't know what I was gonna say, but it's the same melody that's used currently. And uh, I didn't realize that like a lot of the greats did that, like people like Michael Jackson and Marvin Gaye, a lot of people did that in their sessions where that's how they wrote their songs, those mm-hmm. were melodies first. But um, yeah, that's pretty much how I do it. If anything, I might make the track and sometimes it's hard for me to finish the track. That's the part. That's the hard part about being a producer and an artist. Like I won't finish the actual production of the track because I'll start moving into being an artist and singing and writing lyrics too fast. And sometimes because I get inspired in the same time. But let me, man. I hate to do this to you, man. I gotta go out there and get on this mic right now. Do your Don't thing, bro. Hate me. We ain't yes, got ten I'll minutes anyway. Th- I'll bring y'all here with me. Oh, how about that? Th- this is another first on Intellectually Petty Radio. Shout out to Dre Sconey. Sconey down in the building. I just have to use that, man. You know, no, I- I'm copywriting that shit too, man. I'm going to be using Sconey down. Not you, bro. Yeah, you can use it. I'm talking about people. Yeah, I get it sometimes. <laughs> yeah, Thank you, brother. Right, I'm about to hop on stage. Check it out. Yo, that's cold. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yo, this is the first. I'm gonna give y'all that much attention right now, so give me a second. No doubt, man. Do your thing. Yes, yeah, perfect. So, I if you've never had the opportunity, right now. and I can mute him for a second, but if you never had the opportunity to see what goes on before a show, we're gonna give you a little glimpse. You know, we try to do it all here at Intellectually Petty Radio. I'm, I'm, I'm lying. We just got lucky. What do you want to do? And, and my guess is uh, Random White Guy is, is, is a sound guy. I, I don't know his name, so that's, you know, like I, I had to introduce him somehow. So, sorry, Random White Guy. Uh, we'll call you Bob. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> And I'm hoping we get a little uh, a little sound check going on. Oh, that looks beautiful in there. I won't pump it. I'm probably not even gonna stay in this spot like that this whole time. And that's something that people also don't know about is is the spots that they don't want you to be on, the the wires that may be on the floor that you that you know moving around you got to be conscious of so you won't trip and bust your ass. It's a lot of moving parts or stationary parts that you don't necessarily see uh, from the audience. That you know, like these artists, man, they put a lot into this. You know, it's not just show up and sing. This is an hours long process, if not days, you know, especially um, if they're doing like an arena, like the sound check, you know, is a, is a, in itself is a whole animal, you know, alone changing things. You know, if you got pyrotechnics, you know, just, just, just a lot of moving parts that they got to be conscious of. That's not, it was annoying for me when I first figured that out. <laughs> I'm curious, you know, and I didn't get a chance to ask. Yes. Okay. And we're gonna shut it down in a minute. Um, huh? Hopefully, he'll 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 come back. Okay, so now, now I feel like jitting right about now. Exactly. You gotta be from Detroit. Yo, bro, hey. Stab him. Stab him. <laughs> Yo, hey, hey, I don't know. Oh. What's up? We're gonna go ahead and sh- we're gonna shut it down, bro, and let you do your thing. Okay. I appreciate you, man. Yo, appreciate you, man. If you need anything, let me know. We got you. What's up? 
Yo, the, the world famous Nick Speed. You too, bro. Have a great show. We're about to go down. Thank you, man. No doubt, no man. Play. Peace. Yo, and I'm uh, I was gonna play uh, Grandma Ruby, and I might just end the show with that one. But I got another song to play too before we dip up out of here, and I got a few minutes. And I, you know, like I'm, I'm a fan, you know. So, shout out to Dre Sconey, man. Definitely appreciate the time, the energy, the wisdom. Uh, your man's is just dope. If you get a chance, please go, go, just you know, go on YouTube and go down the Dre Sconey uh rabbit hole and i absolutely guarantee you you're going to find something that you think is not just something you like but something that is great i promise you sue me yeah i feel you anyway um give me one second uh we do got a show tonight at uh seven o'clock with jason dixon um serial entrepreneur businessman uh of the century uh, and friend uh, Gary Payton, which helps. Uh, anyway, this is Jobs. This has been another episode of Intellectually Petty Radio. I'm going to jump off into this song, and then we're going to end up with, with Grandma Ruby. Y'all have a good one. Speed.
So do that. Don't give him nothing else. Don't do it, Andre. Please. I won't. No more of that. Mm. 